Hello everybody, Miss Pandrievsky here. I am here today to read you a story and I have chosen a book by Pamela Butchart called Baby Aliens Got My Teacher. I hope you really enjoy it. Should we start by reading the blurb? Izzy and her friends are really surprised when Miss Jones starts being nice to them. After all, this is the teacher who secretly smiled when Maisie Miller fell off her chair that time. And then a teddy bear appears on her desk with your great written on its tummy. Miss Jones isn't a teddy bear kind of person. She's more of a hates puppies and thinks kittens are ugly kind of person. And that's when they know. Miss Jones has been taken over by aliens. And now she's trying to turn them all into aliens too. Run! Let's get started. Sounds exciting. Chapter one. I'm not making this up. You know how sometimes you try to really tell your mum and dad something important and they say stuff like, uh-huh, that's good, or go and tell your dad, or don't be silly, or can't you see I'm on the toilet? Like the time I found a crisp shaped exactly like Miss Cunningham, who lives upstairs, and when I showed mum, she just said, no thanks, you eat it. I obviously did not eat it. I put it in an envelope and carefully posted it through Miss Cunningham's letterbox because that's what I would want someone to do if they found a crisp shaped exactly like me, also called a crisp twin. Anyway, one time, me and my friend Zach, who lives downstairs, ran home from school to tell mum something extremely important about an incident that happened that day, but she didn't listen. Even though we were all hot and sweaty and red and out of breath from running, and Zach had fallen and cut his knee and everything, but mum just gave me a look like I was making it up, like she always does, and said, don't be silly, Izzy. Mum always thinks I'm making stuff up. She says I have a wild imagination. And I say, I can't help that weird stuff happens to me. So I told Zach to tell her, because she never shouts at Zach or tells him he's making things up. One time I asked mum why she shouted at me and not Zach when we coloured in dad's head when he was sleeping and she said I'm not Zach's mum but I'm your mum so I'm allowed to shout at you. So Zach told her about the incident at school and guess what mum phoned his mum and she came and she shouted at him right there in our living room in front of me and mum and dad and everything. I was worried that she was going to start shouting at me too but then I remembered the shouting rule. I felt bad for Zach. His mum shouted really loud and got a lot angrier than my mum did. When they left, mum said it was because Zach's mum and dad have split up and that was the last thing Zach's mum needed when she already has too much on her plate. I didn't really know what that meant, but then I remembered that last week at school dinners, Miss Kidd, the school forced you to eat every scrap dinner monitor, wouldn't let me leave the table until everything on my plate was finished. And I felt sick because the stupid dinner lady had given me five ice cream scoops of shepherd's pie. I used the ice cream scoop for all, they use the ice cream scoop for all sorts of food at our school. Zach says that they don't even wash it before they serve the ice cream. And he knows that for a fact because his mum used to be our old dinner lady. Anyway, I hate shepherd's pie, so I couldn't finish at all. And I got really angry because I wasn't allowed to leave the table and I definitely had too much on my plate. So anyway, mum told me to go to my room and do my homework. But I said I couldn't until she listened to what I had to say about what happened at school. But then her eyes started to get all twitchy. And that's what happens before she gets really annoyed and starts shouting things like, that's it, I've had it, no holiday. So I just left it and said sorry, because I really, really want to go to Disneyland in the school holidays, as we didn't get to go on holiday last summer because Dad had to work. So anyway, I went upstairs, but I didn't go to my room. I sneaked along the hall into Mum and Dad's room and I phoned Zach on his new mobile phone. Dad says it's ridiculous that Zach has a mobile phone at his age, especially one that's better than his. Mum says that Zach's dad buys him lots of expensive things because he's not around as much as he was. I know Zach misses his dad, but we don't really talk about it because Zach doesn't like to. So anyway, I phoned Zach from mum's room and someone answered, but it wasn't Zach, it was somebody else. And then I remembered that we had left our school bags in school because we had run away after the incident. The incident that mum didn't want to hear about. 
So I slammed down the phone and dialed 999 because that's what the police officer that came into our school said to do in an emergency. And this was an emergency. Chapter two. The I had an accident clothes. Even though the incident happened on Friday, I'm going to start this story from Monday because lots of other stuff happened before the incident. Jodie, our friend and the third witness, says that we have to call what happened an incident and not an accident because an accident is, what something, is when something happens by accident and an incident is something that happened that is not an accident. And what happened at school on Friday was definitely not an accident. On Monday, me and Zach walk to school like we always do because our school is right beside where we live. And Jodie's mum drove Jodie right on into the playground, even though Mr Murphy, the head teacher, shouts no cars allowed out of his window every morning. I don't think Jodie's mum even hears Mr Murphy shouting because she has her music up really loud. And I can usually hear what song she's singing along to, even though all the windows are rolled up. Jodie says her mum is practising for the X Factor because she's bored of working in the bakery and she's sick to the back teeth of smelling like sausage rolls. But Jodie says her mum's not good at singing and that one time the woman who lived upstairs came down to their door, a, scar a scarred mum, and she shouted, Nightmare neighbour! and said it sounded like a cat being strangled. So that's when we started to spy on the woman who lives upstairs because as Jodie said, how does she know what sounds like a cat being strangled? And this was a very good question. I have two cats and Zach has one. So we followed her for a while to make sure she wasn't a cat strangler, but she didn't really go anywhere. And then one day she caught us peeking through her letterbox and she phoned the police. And even though we told them about her being a cat strangler, we got into big trouble. But I really don't mind because she knows that we were onto her. And Zach said it was unlikely that she would strike again because we're watching her. So our cats are safe. Anyway, I also heard Mr Murphy tell the office ladies that Jodie's mum was a nightmare parent. And I didn't think that was a very nice thing for the head teacher to say. So I told Jodie and she told her mum and now every time Mr Murphy goes into the bakery, Jodie's mum gives him the cakes that have fallen on the ground. But I'm secretly glad that Jodie's mum can't sing very well because that means she can still go to work in the bakery. So when we go to Jodie's house, there are always loads of donuts and yum yums and Bakewell tarts because her mum always gets to bring them home for free. I've not decided what I'm going to be when I grow up yet, but I'm thinking about becoming a baker. So anyway, me and Zach were walking up to the school gates when Miss Jones, our horrible teacher, drove past really fast and splattered us with a massive puddle. I screamed, but Zach screamed even louder because he was standing nearest to the road and got completely soaked. Zach screamed even louder than the time that I put a pea in each finger of his gloves. Zach is terrified of peas. His mum says that he has a phobia about them, which I think means he's scared he's going to turn into one, but I'm not sure. Anyway, I got really wet and the mud splattered all over my new bag. And Zach got mud all over his teeth because he had his, had his mouth open when Miss Jones splashed us. So we had to go to, to the school nurse because we were soaking wet and she made us wear the spare I had an accident clothes and sent us both to class. At least we both had to wear the I had an accident clothes because if it had been just one of us, everyone would have thought that we had had a real accident like Macy Miller had last year when Jodie made her laugh too much. When we got to class, Miss Jones didn't even ask us why we were late. I thought that was really weird because usually Miss Jones asks you for a note and if you don't have one, she tells you off and makes you go back down to the school office and get one. I don't understand why she makes us do that because it's two and a half minutes to get down to the school office, then another three minutes to wait in the school office while the ladies stop ignoring you and open the glass window and then two and a half minutes to get back up the stairs to class again. That's a total of eight minutes. So if you're only two minutes late in the first place, you end up being 10 minutes late. 
So me and Zach just went and sat down in our seats and I told Jodie why we were wearing the I had an accident clothes. Then Jodie told us that Miss Jones was being really nice today and that she said we didn't have to do our maths work this morning. I was really happy that we didn't have to do our maths work, even though I'm quite good at maths. I hate doing it because it's boring and I have to share a book with Gary and he always picks his nose and puts it between the pages and he calls it a crusty surprise. Ugh. But I did think it was really weird that Miss Jones didn't want to do maths that day because everyone knows that Miss Jones loves maths. She loves it so much that one time when nobody got the answers right in a maths quiz, Miss Jones got really annoyed and shouted at Jodie. And Jodie got upset and shouted, Miss Jones, if you love maths so much, why don't you just marry it? And then she had to stay in a break for cheek and got to do double maths homework. So anyway, we decorated our exercise books instead. And that was better than maths. I was a bit suspicious about why Miss Jones was being so nice, because she's never nice. Zach said maybe it was because she'd felt bad for splashing us. But I said that Miss Jones hadn't even noticed that she'd splashed us because she was driving like a maniac. I used to think our old teacher, Miss Riley, hated us. One time I wrote, Miss Riley is mean on the board when she wasn't looking and then when she saw when she saw it she started crying and I felt really bad that's when I found out she probably didn't hate us because if you hate someone you don't really care if they call you mean but I had been unsure and I was perfectly sure that Miss Jones always actually did hate us because she's moaning all the time at us even when we weren't doing anything wrong and she never gave us free time or treats like any of the other nicer teachers in the school gave their classes. One time, Maisie Miller was swinging on her chair and she fell off and hurt her arm. And I swear Miss Jones had a tiny smile on her face. But the time I found out that Miss Jones really hated us was when Jodie had one of her Jodie tantrums, also called a JT in the middle of the Christmas concert because Gary was supposed to be a lamb, but he kept saying, moo, moo, every time it was Jodie's turn to speak and Miss Jones didn't say anything about it. So Jodie started kicking everything and pulling her hair out, just like she always does when she has a JT. Then she shouted, you hate me, Miss Jones, don't you? And Miss Jones didn't even deny it. So then Jodie kicked the manger and the baby Jesus fell out on the stage and everyone in the crowd gasped and someone said, outrageous! And Jodie started crying. I don't know why everyone got upset because it wasn't like it was a real baby that fell out of the manger. Our baby Jesus was only made of plastic. At lunchtime, Miss Jones let us out five minutes early because she was going out for lunch. I thought that was also weird because Miss Jones never goes out for lunch. She usually just sits at her desk and eats a smelly cup of soup. Then, when we come back to class, we try to guess what kind that she had that day by smelling the air. Last week, I guessed minestrone. And when Jack, uh, Zach checked the bin to see the wrapper, he couldn't believe that I'd actually got it right but that's because I saw it in her drawer earlier when I was looking for the big stapler, but I didn't tell him that. So anyway, on Monday, everyone thought Miss Jones was great because we didn't have to do our maths and also because we got one hour and five minutes for lunch. Then after lunch, she didn't get back until two minutes after the end of lunch bell had gone. I wanted to ask if she had a note, but Zach said, no, don't. We've got to keep her in a good mood. So she says that we don't have to do any work ever again. And guess what? That's exactly what she said. Next chapter, teddies and diseases. On Tuesday, Miss Jones was wearing makeup. I've never seen her wearing makeup before. Zach said it made it look like she was one of those young teachers but I thought she still like, she looked like she was about 30 or something old like that. I was just about to sit down at the table when I saw the weirdest thing ever. There on her desk was a teddy bear. 
you might think that's not very strange at all, but Miss Jones really isn't a teddy bear kind of person. She's more of a hates puppies and thinks kittens are ugly kind of person. The teddy bear was pink and had your great written on its tummy and a rose in its paw. Everyone stared at it, but nobody knew what to do, so we just sat down. And then Miss Jones said, let's all make a Valentine's card today and gave us all a piece of pink card and little red love hearts and put the greatest love songs ever, six, on the CD player. I thought it was weird for three reasons. Reason number one, Miss Jones is smiling a lot. Reason number two, Miss Jones was singing. Reason number three, it was October. Everyone just stared at each other. I think we were all in shock. Like the time me and mum were waiting for the bus outside the library and I leaned against the glass in the bus shelter but I didn't know that the glass had been taken out because of vandalism and I fell backwards. I almost rolled on the road and got hit by a bus but a man who was there dropped his peanuts and grabbed me before I did. Afterwards, mum kept saying, thank you, thank you, and trying to give the man money to buy new peanuts, but he wouldn't take it. And then on the bus, I didn't say anything at all. And I still had my apple in my hands and I had to squeeze it so hard that my nails stuck into it. And mum said that I was in shock. Anyway, Zach likes making cards. So he said he was going to make one for his mum to cheer her up. And I just said, okay, and didn't make fun of him like I sometimes do. So me and Jodie sat together and tried to find out why Miss Jones was being so weird. Jodie said that one time her aunt started doing lots of weird things, like saying, good morning, Geoffrey, to an orange and pouring milk on her violin. The doctor said that it was stress and sent her auntie to bed for a little rest. Then I remembered that at Cousin Claire's wedding, Mum had acted really weird too. She kept telling everyone that she loved them and had thrown her shoes out of the window. Dad said that Mum had been a bit tipsy that night. So me and Jodie pretended to make Valentine's cards. And we really did make a list of all the things that make might be wrong with Miss Jones. Diseases, Miss Jones might have, stress, or she might have the tipsy disease. But then we couldn't think of any more diseases that Miss Jones might have. So we showed it to Zach and he said the writing, that writing a list was a stupid thing to do. He said that he liked Miss Jones now because she was being nice and told us to stop making the list. So we fell out with him until the bell went. Then when we were all putting our coats on, Jodie said that her mum would give me a lift home if Zach didn't say sorry for saying the list was stupid and that he'd have to walk home on his own. So Zach said sorry and Jodie said apology accepted and we all walked home together. Next chapter. Miss Jones is a weirdo. On Wednesday, Miss Jones stood at the door and patted our heads when we walked into the classroom. Then she started calling us weird names like pumpkin and peach and pomegranate and then she started doing the register and did the same thing. I thought maybe we were going to be starting a new project on fruit or something but we didn't. Instead Miss Jones gave us all sweets and said we could watch a film. I got really excited because Miss Jones never gives us sweets or lets us watch films not even when it's the last day of term. So we got all comfy on the floor with the big, big cushions and then Miss Jones sat on the floor with us. I'd never seen a teacher do that before. The film was okay to begin with. It was about a huge meteorite that was heading towards Earth and everyone was panicking because the Earth was going to explode. But then it got all soppy and Miss Jones cried so much that Zach nearly had to get the nurse to calm her down. Then Miss Jones just sat there hugging her teddy and saying, this is my favourite film of all time. That's when I knew Miss Jones had gone bonkers. If this was her favourite film, why would she be crying so much all the way through it? That afternoon, Miss Jones said that it was high time we did some meditation. So we sat with our legs crossed and said, mmm for ages. 
I didn't really understand what meditation was for, but Miss Jane said it was for relaxing. And she must have been right because Maisie Miller got so relaxed that she fell asleep on my leg. Or maybe she just fainted again. You can never really tell with Maisie Miller. One time I tried to show Maisie my ingrown toenail just before my toenail removal operation, but she fainted before I even got my sock off. We were supposed to keep our eyes closed during the meditation, but I peeked to see if anyone else was peeking and Zach was peeking too. And then he saw me peeking and whispered, look, look, look at Miss Jones. So I did. And she had her eyes closed and she was waving her teddy slowly backwards and forwards in the air, chanting, ah, ee, ah, ooh. When we were finished meditating, Zach said that Miss Jones really was being weird and asked to see the list again. He said he didn't think that Miss Jones had tipsy disease or stress but he said that she might have craziness. So he added it to the list. Then Zach said he remembered watching a film with his mum one time. He said that in the film, there was an alien who wriggled inside a woman's ear and took control of her body. He said that the alien woman had acted really nice to everyone. And then when they became her friends, she had put little baby aliens in their ears and they became aliens too. He said that nobody ever suspected what she was doing to be something bad because she was so nice to everybody, but she was really planning on an alien invasion. So we added baby alien in ear to the list. But then Maisie Miller woke up and heard what we were really talking about. And Maisie Miller gets really scared of stuff like that. Before we could stop her, she started crying and Miss Jones came over rushing over. I thought Miss Jones was going to start shouting and asking what we had done to make Maisie cry, but she didn't. She just gave Maisie a hug and said, now, now, my little lamb, what's wrong? And that made Maisie cry even more. And then she started screaming. In the end, Maisie Miller's mum had to come to school and collect her because the school nurse said that Maisie Miller was hysterical. <laughs> Time bomb teddy. Nothing could have prepared us for what happened on Thursday. Miss Jones was absent and Miss Jones is never absent. I was late for school that day because I got locked in the bathroom again and dad had to take the door off his hinges again to get me out. Then dad took me to school and said not to tell mum what had happened because she would get angry with him for still not having fixed the bathroom. When I got to school, I went straight to class and I didn't bother going to the office for a note because Miss Jones didn't seem to be asking for notes anymore. But when I got to class, I saw that Miss Scythe, the deputy head teacher, was sitting at Miss Jones's desk. Miss Scythe told me to go to the office and get a note at once. So I ran down the stairs to the office as fast as I could because the deputy head is seriously scary. I heard that one time she made every single pupil in the school cry during an assembly just by, make, by making her eyes go really wide. Then, when I was being ignored at a reception, I heard the office ladies talking about Miss Jones's teddy. They said that the head teacher's ears must be burning and then they said this teddy situation is a time bomb waiting to explode. At lunchtime, me and Zach and Jody ate our lunch and then sneaked off to the den to talk about what we'd heard the office ladies saying. We have to be really quiet when we're hiding in the den because it's under the stairs that everybody walks up to get to the toilet. One time, the caretaker found us there and we thought we were going to be in trouble big time. But then he just said we could stay there if we wanted and he even gave us a key. He said it was okay because he was re he was retiring next week and he didn't care what the head teacher thought anyway. He said that if he was a pupil in this school, he'd need somewhere to hide every now and then too. So now there's a new caretaker, but he doesn't even know about the little room under the stairs. And even if he does find out, we're the ones with a key. The den is the best. There's lots of great stuff in it, like a sink and a kettle and a toaster. Zach makes cups of tea when we have secret meetings, but we just 
hold them. We don't drink them because we don't have any milk or sugar and we're not allowed to boil the kettle, so it's cold tea anyway. Jodie keeps saying that she's going to bring three slices of bread from her house so we can have toast, but she keeps forgetting. So anyway, Zach got the tea ready and Jodie took out the list of diseases Miss Jones might have and told me to tell her everything I'd heard the office lady say. So I told them how I'd heard the office lady say that the head teacher's ears were burning and that Miss Jones's teddy was an actual time bomb and that it was going to explode. And then Jodie said, I think I know what's wrong with Miss Jones. And then someone knocked on the door and Zach screamed. Then we heard a voice say, it's me. But we didn't know who me was, so we didn't move. But then the voice said, it's Maisie, let me in, quick. We couldn't believe it. Nobody was supposed to know about the den except for us and the old caretaker. Jodie rolled her eyes and gave Zach a look. But he got annoyed and said, what? It wasn't me. It must have been Izzy. And then I got annoyed and said that it wasn't me either. So I opened the door and pulled Maisie in before anybody saw her. Maisie told us that she'd known about the den for ages because she saw us sneaking in one time. Maisie's a scaredy cat, but she's all right. And she's really small. So we said that she could join in the secret meetings in the den as long as she didn't tell anybody. But then Jodie said, there's some seriously scary stuff. We might need to talk about Maisie. And I thought Maisie was going to start crying again. But she didn't. So Zach made her a cup of tea. And then Jodie was just about to tell us what she thought was happening to Miss Jones when the bell rang. So Jodie said, the secret meeting will continue tonight at my house, 6pm. Be there. Baby alien in the ear. We'd never had a secret meeting at Jodie's house before, as we usually have them in the den. I don't know what to bring, so I just brought a bag of crisps, four biscuits from the cupboard, and my good pens, oh, and Dad's torch. Jodie lives a few houses down from us, so me and Zach walked over there. When we got there, Maisie Miller was waiting outside Jodie's flat with her mum. Maisie was wearing a long padded coat and gloves and earmuffs muffs even though it wasn't cold and Zach only had a t-shirt on. Maisie's mum gave Maisie a big hug and then she said look after my little angel I couldn't bear it if anything was to happen to her so we said that we would. Then when we got up to Jodie's flat Maisie had to wave out of the window to say she was safe before her mum got back in the car. I had to help Maisie take her coat off because she couldn't really move. Then when we got when I got it off I saw that she had another coat on underneath, which I thought was really weird, but Maisie is a bit weird, so I didn't say anything. Jodie's mum made us do the tour, even though me and Zach had been to Jodie's like a million times before, but Maisie hadn't, so we all had to do the tour again. Maisie looked a bit late, Maisie looked a bit confused. I don't think she's ever been, ever seen a house like Jodie's before. Jodie's mum watches those extreme house makeovers, programmes where people say things like, I think my house is boring, can you make it more like a jungle? And then they do. I like watching that programme too, because sometimes the people who change the house get it all wrong, and when the owners open they, their eyes, they get a shock and they get really angry. Jodie's house looks like a princess's palace. Everything is pink and gold and sparkly. Jodie and her mum share a bedroom because Jodie's mum says that they are more like sisters than mother and daughter. They've even got bunk beds, which is brilliant. I asked mum if I could have bunk beds too, but she said no. So I told her about how Jodie had bunk beds and how she shared them with her mum. Our mum said that if I really wanted bunk beds, I'd have to share a room with her. So I said I didn't want bunk beds anymore because I like having my own room to myself and also because mum snores. Jodie and her mum have another bedroom that used to be a beauty parlour where Jodie's mum painted the neighbours' nails and waxed their hairy lady moustaches. But now it's a recording studio so she can practice her singing. After the tour, we gave Maisie's coat coats to Jodie's mum and went to the bedroom. Jodie had already made a stay out secret meeting sign. 
before we got there, so we put it up. Then we pulled all the covers off the bed and sat in a circle on the floor. And Jodie said, are you ready? And we said, yes. And then Jodie said the secret meeting had officially begun. I said that I do the writing because I'm good at lists and organising. And then Jodie said, I think I know what's wrong with Miss Jones. And we were all really quiet. And then she said, I think Miss Jones is an alien. She's got a baby alien in the ear, just like the film Zach told us about. And I thought she was probably right, because that would explain why Miss Jones was acting all nice all of a sudden. We couldn't believe it. Our teacher, an alien. And then Zach said, I bet she's planning an alien invasion. That's why the head teacher's ears are burning. She's put a baby alien to turn him into an alien. And now she wants to turn us all into aliens too. And then Maisie had to lie down for a bit. Glow in the dark milkshake. So we waited for Maisie to wake up. Then we went through to the living room to use Jodie's mum's computer to do some research about aliens. We found lots of information and lots of pictures all about aliens. But some of the pictures were a bit scary and Maisie was starting to turn a bit green and get wobbly. So Jodie's mum said that it was time to stop using the internet and that it was time for cakes instead. So we had cakes and the really good strawberry milkshake that only Jodie's mum can make. Maisie had never had Jodie's mum's milkshake before. At first, she was really scared of it because it's really pink. Like glow-in-the-dark pink milkshake. But then when she tried it, she really liked it and she had five glasses. Since we couldn't use the computer to research, Zach said maybe we could interview people like they do on TV. Jodie said that was a brilliant idea. But I said that I was the one who was in charge of the research. So it was up to me what we did next. But luckily, I thought doing the interview was a brilliant idea too. So that's what we did. We interviewed Jodie's mum because she was the only one around to interview. We asked her what she could tell us about aliens and she told us all to sit down and listen. I had to get Maisie to help me do the notes because Jodie's mum talks a lot. But this is what we found out. Aliens, they are nice. They are peaceful. They come to Earth to make new friends. They can read minds. They are not green like everyone thinks. They are actually very pretty and sometimes glow. At the end of the interview, we asked Jodie's mum if she had ever met an alien before. And she said, not yet, but I'd love to. So we thanked her for the interview and went back to the bedroom. We all agreed that it looked like Miss Jones really was an alien because she was being really nice to us all of a sudden, number one and not moaning at us like she normally did, number two. And she was going out for lunch now instead of staying in her room with her smelly cup of soup on her own. So maybe that was number three. And then Maisie got scared that Miss Jones was going to start doing number five. And then I said, forget number five. What about number four? If Miss Jones can read our minds, then she knows that we know she's an alien. So we came up with a plan. The plan was that Miss Jones looked that when Miss Jones looked at us, we would all sing la 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 really loud in our heads. So if she tried to read our minds, she wouldn't be able to hear anything except for la 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 la. Then Jodie said, "What about what the office lady said about Miss Jones's teddy being a time bomb? What are we going to do about that?" And then Zach said, "Wait." And we all jumped and Maisie did a little yelp. And he said that if the office ladies knew Miss Jones was an alien, they must be aliens too. And then Maisie got so scared, she was pink sick everywhere. We'll leave it there for now. Next chapter, plans, diversions and smelly toes. I hope you've enjoyed the, the story so far. I look forward to seeing you next time for the next instalment. Take care. Bye.